Sometimes you may come across a part in your cosplay or prop that's too organic to make just with foam. But good thing foam clay exists. Foam clay is just like the name says, it's foam and it's clay. Though it's still very different than clay, it's also incredibly lightweight. Cosplay Shop has black, grey and white foam clay. The only difference there is, is the color. Other than that, it's completely the same material. And when you open the top, you'll see it is packed a second time in a bag to preserve it longer. When you think foam clay, chances are that you're thinking of sculpting. And you'd be right. However, foam clay does have some other uses as well. Let's go over some examples. Overall, I'd say foam clay gets used in five ways. One, to sculpt, obviously. Two, to cast. Three, as a filler. Four, texturing. And five, impressing or stamping. Here are the timestamps in case you want to skip ahead. Let's start with the sculpting. So here's the base of a foam blade that I made. It's from God of War. It's one of the Blades of Chaos. This is just two sheets of foam with a fiberglass rod inside. And I did some 5mm foam for the details. As you can see, it's pretty boring, a bit bland. What should be here is a skull. And I think foam clay will be perfect for this. Before using it, I like to knead it a bit to get rid of the excess moist and air bubbles. So this is what it looks like straight out of the bag and I can just start applying this to my prop and start sculpting. The best glue to work with foam clay is just... <laughs> water. <laughs> I dampen the foam surface before applying the foam clay, as this will make it stick better. And then I just apply it with my hands, this is probably the easiest way. Even though it's called foam clay, it doesn't really work like a clay, and it will render most tools useless. However, some silicone tips work when used with water. But most of the time, just use your hands. Whenever I feel like the foam is drying out or sticking to my hands, I just apply some extra water. Also keep in mind that there are limits to how high you can stack foam clay. When you stack it too high, it won't be able to support itself. Alright, so the foam clay has dried, it took around 48 hours and it is no longer mushy, it is completely solid, it just feels like regular foam now. You might notice that now that it dried, it did lose a bit of its detail, sure, but also a lot of the messy parts smoothened themselves out. But if there are still some rough parts in there, and there are, I can still fix that using a Dremel, so by sanding it. Because now it just feels like regular foam, but it also kind of works like regular foam. So I can just sand it and remove some of the rough parts, literally fixing it in post. It is possible to heat seal your foam clay, but you don't have to. But if you do, watch out, because it is very easy to overheat. So just a quick flyover with a heat gun will do the job. Alright, so this is what it looks like when painted. I also added some red for some fake blood because why not? So foam clay also has to be primed just like regular foam. But of course you first have to let the foam clay completely dry before applying a primer. Because if you don't you will seal your foam clay and then it will never dry, ever. So I primed this with the black cost paint, it's a primer and a paint in one. And then I covered it with the forged iron cost paint, but the metallic one as well. So foam clay is pretty cool, you can just apply it on your prop and sculpt it however you want. But what if you can't put it directly on your prop or you don't want to? Well, you don't have to, let me show you. Now if you don't want to sculpt on the prop itself, you can do so separately. Just apply all the previous step like before, but this time just work on some cling film. When it's right, you can just peel it off and apply it to whatever part on the costume you want. Also, make sure to dry it on room temperature. As you can see with the thing we made here, it's still there, but it's not as high as we made it before, because as foam clay dries out, it flattens, that's just gravity. However, that's perfectly fixable by just adding a core. I guess it all depends on your preference. Now, if you remember at the start of the video, I said the foam clay came in bags. The good thing about it is it's a Ziploc bag, which means I could just close it again. So I press out most of the air and I fold it a bit 
and then I close the ziplock bag and then I can just put it back in the tub and close the tub. Of course, the longer I don't use it, the more it will dry out. I, you cannot change that. But I just want to emphasize that it's really important to close that bag and make sure there's no air that can get to the foam clay because it will dry out really fast if you don't. Other than sculpting, foam clay is also used to cast objects with. I had to film this part at home, so apologies in advance. I just put some foam clay inside the silicone mold and made sure to press it in very well. Then I put it in the freezer overnight and then take it back out. If I wouldn't freeze it, it would just rip and tear the foam clay when casting. But now that it's frozen, it just comes out beautifully. Don't wait too long because it defrosts in a matter of minutes. For many people, foam clay is also considered a filler, a bit like quick seal. Whenever you have a gap in your prop or nasty seams, you can just apply a thin layer of foam clay and smoothen it out as best as you can with some water. When it's dry, you can even sand it and it will be like it's part of the foam. However, when you want to fill detail work, maybe quick seal is a better idea. And now that it's dry, I can just use some sanding paper and smoothen it out even more so that it really becomes part of the foam. And now we come to what I think is the easiest way to work with foam clay, which is texturing. I used it too in this axe. This technique would also work perfect to add, for example, gums to a set of teeth or claws. This method is very organic, but also very easy. You can just apply it to your build however you like. I learned that dabbing tinfoil on it gives it a nice ragged texture. And then this is what it looks like dried. As you can see, the texture is still there, but it disappeared a little bit because, again, foam clay smoothens itself out over time. So maybe overdo it a bit to make sure it stays there. So if you guys want to experiment with it too, let me know in the comments because I think you can do a lot of stuff with it. And then finally we come to the impressing or stamping of foam clay, which I think could be a very cool technique to add some intricate details to your build. I just flatten some foam clay on cling film, like a pancake, and then press in an object. I immediately remove it again and the details are there to stay. When dried, I can just cut it out and glue it to whatever part of my costume that I want. And then it will look something like this. As you can see, the details are still there and now I can just cut out the axis and then glue it to my armor. Of course, the downside is still not dry because it was drying on the table. But I can just flip it upside down, let it dry for like a few hours and it will be fine. If you're really in a hurry, you could already glue it, but I don't recommend that. Of course, I use this random coin. But knowing how this works, you could also just 3D print some stamps and then just apply it to your foam clay. And like that, you could add some really cool details to your armor. Because when I see an intricate armor with like engravings in them, I'm always scared like how am I going to add engravings to foam because it's not easy and that brings us to the end of this foam clay basics video if you have any more questions about this subject or you would just like a video on another subject you can just leave it in the comments down below we always love new ideas you can also join our discord server link is in the description below thank you very much for watching i'm sky shark and i will see you in the next one